A very good morning to you and welcome to the last edition of the platform on Flow 94.9 FM. When I say the last edition, I mean the last edition for the week. Yes, today is Friday, the 28th day in the month of August. And um, today on the platform, it is a special edition. We've been having a three-day civil military relations radio talk. And today is the third day. And it's also a virtual accountability forum on civil military relations my name is chioma Unkwanta, and um this morning we are going to be looking at the impact um of external and internal accountability mechanism of security and law enforcement agencies during covid19 yes but first of all we want to commend officers and men of the nigerian um security agencies for their sacrifices and hard work to defend Nigeria and secure the citizens during um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, um, a foundation in the course of her civil military relations project in Nigeria, that's Clean Foundation, has engaged with the um, Nigerian Army Human Rights Dex and um, they are commending them for their tremendous work with regards to holding um, their personnel accountable for rights violations. Now, various human rights violations were perpetrated by some members of security agencies and law enforcement agencies who were actually charged with the responsibility of protecting the lives and properties of citizens during the pandemic. Now, the situation um, looking at it was actually appalling and actually sent a bad impression to the citizens and also the international community. So today on the program, we're looking at external and internal accountability mechanism of security and law enforcement agencies during the COVID-19 pandemic, the heat most especially of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I am not doing this alone. I have some very um, wonderful people with me in the studio this morning. I have uh, the state coordinator, National Human Rights Commission, Abia State, Barista Uche Wokocha. You're welcome. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Welcome, listeners. Thank you for joining us again today. And I also have SP Jeffrey Obona, the PPRO of the Nigerian Police Force in Abia State. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning, and thank you for having me. Sir, you're in your full regalia today. <laughs> of course, um, you know, it's always like this. Mm. It's always like this. Okay, you're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for joining us this morning. So, like we said, we're looking at the impact impact of the external and internal accountability mechanism of security and law enforcement agencies during COVID-19. But first of all, we want to describe accountability both internally and externally. Let's start with that. Barista Uche, can you help us with that, please? Yes, uh, it's good that we get to know what is accountability, particularly as it concerns law enforcement agents. According to the Free Encyclopedia, it says a uh, Accountability involves holding both individual law officers as well as law enforcement agencies responsible for effectively delivering basic services of crime, control, and maintain order while treating individuals fairly and within the bounds of the law. Okay. That's according to the free encyclopedia. Accountability is also the fact or condition of being accountable or responsible. Accountability refers to an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's action. Officers' accountability means holding all levels of officers, law officers, responsible for accomplishing departmental goals or agency goals each agency has a way a reason for its setup constitutional reason is holding them responsible to meet those uh, goals no. all right how do law officers or individuals in employment show accountability one is through discipline staying on track and not getting derailed by competing priorities or desires if you are a law officer and you want to accomplish the goal of the agency you have to be disciplined by not de being derailed 
if you are not there to make money or to abuse human rights or to you know take sides you have to as as much as possible be neutral another show of accountability will be integrity and this means being honest being committed and apologizing when something goes wrong because when you are dealing with human beings something will always go wrong you are a human being dealing with other human beings human beings are very precious subjects both in, in the eyes of human beings and the eyes of God so when you are dealing with human beings you have to maintain a form of balance in ethics and governance accountability is answerability too blameworthiness liability and the expectation of account given like I said for you to be accountable it takes responsibility it takes integrity it takes discipline another thing it takes is instruments tools with which to be accountable okay you can't ask people to be accountable without providing them with the necessary things equipment they need to be accountable if you do not provide them with the necessary equipment and they fail to live up to the expectations of the agencies or the expectations of the government that set them up you cannot blame such individuals because accountability like i said is on individual level it's also on a departmental level no. on agency level and on governmental yeah. level okay. and this is what we is these uh, disparities and gaps is what we saw playing out during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. All right. So, um, SP Jeffrey Bonner, who is held accountable for the actions of security and law enforcement agencies? Thank, thank you so much. You see, all of us, we have our names and we have um, either first number or AP number. So, whoever that derails, Whoever that fails to conform with the norms of the society, the Nigeria Police Force in particular, whoever that fails to conform, we have ways of handling such a situation. That is why you may have heard where we subject people to ordinary room trials. People are served Paris. So in other words, everyone is accountable to his or her own deed. Deed, okay. Everyone is accountable to his or her own deed. And they are answerable to um, a higher authority? Of course, of course, because, you know, I now, as a senior officer, if a junior one or any of my subordinates derail, if it's somebody of the rank where he can be tried in a the room, that is an inspe uh, inspector downwards. Yeah. I will default to that person and he will be made to face the ordinary trial. And where is a, a senior officer that is under me, he will, I will serve him query, which he will answer. And whatever that is the outcome will be on his head. Okay. So that is it. All right. So um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, there were cases of extrajudicial killings and um, some um, anomalies that happened during the COVID-19 pandemic in trying to enforce the restrictions and laws that were put in place the, um, during the heat of the pandemic. The perpetrators of this act, most especially from the law enforcement agencies, have they been persecuted? And give us instances if they have. Well, you know that um, before now, just as we pointed out two days ago, they are, we, we were lacking the, you know, you can't say, you can't try that person under the criminal court. Mm. But since we hadn't any law that would say this is where we used to try that person. But be that as it may, any police officer caught in that act, will be held liable and be tried in ordinary room. We have uh, you know, a kind of provision in our police act and regulation that we can use to checkmate it. That person can be held or tried under disobedience to lawful order. Because as soon as this COVID-19 stepped in, the Inspector General of Police 
gave orders that all police officers should conform to the, the protocol or the, the COVID-19 protocol. Mm. He went as far as making available some, uh, you know, making available face mask and even uh, sani uh, and this, uh, sanitizers, sanitizers okay. amongst, amongst other things. So whoever that is, you know, found negating such things. That is why that time before this thing became, uh, people started seeing it as real. You can see a police officer who is not wearing a face mask, not covering himself, but he wants somebody else to be covered, you know, to cover his own. So for you to enforce that order and directive, you have to show that practical example mm. by putting on your own shield or face mask so that whoever you want to correct will take a, a cue from you. Okay, so what about in the instances of um, what happened in um, Ohafia and um, in Aba during the pandemic, um, the heat of the pandemic? Yes, yes. were those officers actually persecuted? Of course, okay. of course. As soon as those incidents occurred, you know, the one in Aba initially he took to flight mm. after the commission of that uh, offense, but he was later gotten declared he was declared wanted so few days after he was gotten then upon his arrest he was taken to court okay. of course after the trial dismissing him formally because you can't take a servant police officer to court. to court yes you dismiss him formally let him he will now answer x okay and he's cooling off in the one of the prisons in uh, okay one of the correctional centers in the state, in the state. so also the one of our half here. So we don't really sweep all these things under the carpet. That is why I told you. We we used to say, Oh why well, you're on your own. Mm. Whatever you commit is on your head. And that is why in the Nigeria Police Force we don't say we. It is always I. Okay. All right, we don't say we in the force, we say I. Um, Barista Uche, what suggestions does the National Human Rights Commission have as regards um, perpetrators of some of the crimes that we experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic? Like uh, Shakespeare, we say, the fault is not in our stars, but in us. The fault of accountability is not in our laws, but in the implementers of the, law. the laws the point remains that whenever law enforcement agents infringe the law or abuse human rights there is this first instinct of uh, the agency and the speakers of the agency is usually to protect the person mm. they call it esprit de corps it is when they shout now become very loud and loudest they will come up and now uh, say something that is in most cases not in all cases, all cases. exactly okay. i must say that is in most cases particularly when it comes to things like extortion unlawful arrest detention it comes to a point that it seems they have made another law so much so and when you even if you put it in writing writing a petition against an officer for things like unlawful arrest and uh, detention, things like uh, extortion, things like, uh, you know, all these things, it doesn't get uh, the desired uh, attention. At times, no caution at all. In most cases where we've done some follow-up, yes, uh, they will just be asked to return the, if you know what you have taken from this person, you better return it to mm -hmm. before Yawa go bust. That kind of thing. That is what I've heard once in a while. On occasions. So they will return the money. And that it ends there. Which means. They have the choice. Yeah. If nobody talks. And uh, you don't see any kind of uh, reprimand. And I believe that this is why. It has become commonplace. It has become commonplace. While I am. Talking against extortion. Another one they protect, they protect, and that is very painful, is death or missing in custody. Okay. Once so a suspect in the police custody, and something happens to the suspect in the custody, 
either the person dies or the person uh, just disappears because at times they will tell you they never even though people will testify we saw the police arrest this person or we saw the soldiers arrest this person they will tell you that that person was never in our custody and you look for the person eternally the person is not where to be found and everybody around will start uh, covering up even if the person was brought to the station everybody in that police station or in the military barrack will deny ever seeing that person where did the person go to mm. so this uh, when it comes to extrajudicial killings the ones that happened in the public view that cannot be covered up of course they're always quick in dealing with such but the ones that happened in their station and a lot of them do happen out of negligence because the law is if you keep somebody in a in detention you have to keep the person in safe custody whatever happens to the person you are responsible for it at times uh, people die because they are sick and they don't have access to their drugs in, they die in the custody at times they die because of injuries they sustained as a result of alleged torture and other things and these ones are covered up national human rights commission we've tried but it's only on very few occasions that we have succeeded in getting the the law enforcement agents accountable for such a instance for such a extrajudicial killings, killings or neglect that lead to death only in very few occasions you suddenly meet a breach wall to get them to allow an autopsy one time it took us five years five good years five years five years to get the law enforcement agent police to allow an autopsy on somebody that died in their custody and there's this argument this person was tortured and he died he got sick and he died and that kind of thing okay let's have a an autopsy, an autopsy. it took five years so like i said we are extrajudicial killing happened in the public of course it's easy to deal with, deal it. with it the police and the other law enforcement agents they deal with it fast when it happens inside their or inside their barracks mm. or inside their stations there is this cover-up okay. they are not often very open about it. SP Jeffrey, I, I'm sure you have um, an answer for us as regards um, how the police handles the death of suspects in custody, of in course, their custody. Of course, of course. What she's talking of, well, you know, I speak for Abia State Police Command. Mm. She may have, you know, uh, it, it's just a general perspective, general perspective, not limited to a particular area or particular security organization but i will say that in abia state police command that i speak for mm. you see we don't we don't hide any such thing like i said whoever that commits i know th there was recently we had a uh, you know a cell break all the people who were there were subjected to the internal departmental action that is one on the issue of unlawful arrest, it depends on what she meant by unlawful arrest. You cannot tell me that if somebody comes to the police with a report and you go ahead to effect the arrest of the person being reported against, that it is unlawful. Or you talk of detention. There are many times we will we'll arrest some suspects. You give them the opportunity of getting people to have them on bail, bailable offenses. Mm. That person might be there for a day or two without somebody coming up for that for their bail. Then, that of extortion. I know how many police officers in Abia State Command that have been sent out of this job because of corrupt practices. That is why I'm saying she might be making a generalization so we're about talking of dates okay dates yes. in custody i believe that whoever that is brought into custody has one or two relations 
there is no how police will do i mean somebody will die in a custody and it will be swept under the carpet once somebody dies in custody you know that even when somebody is enjoying his freedom that person can as well lose his life there are people who are hypertensive once you take them to cell there are some that the moment you mention police they will get scared if that person is having high blood pressure the person's high uh, uh, blood pressure might go up talk of when you have that person in custody some people may decide that they will not eat they will not do this do that subjecting themselves onto unnecessary punishments because they find themselves in the police custody these are things that are capable of taking away one's life so when there is there are such incidents we don't really fold our arms over it okay. we have to find out the nitty-gritty the circumstances surrounding the death of such a person and where possible you know because of course we have police hospital where such people can be taken to i know many times that we people fell sick while in custody and are taken to the police hospital for treatment but the the issue of um, autopsy you know that once there is any such any such a death in custody there must be autopsy to unravel the circumstances leading to that person's death mm -hmm. so that we as an organization will also be free from blames because i know the members of the public might uh, say that the the person was killed in the police custody the person might be you know a lot of things a lot of things so that is just she made a generalization but i'm talking of abia state i don't think any such thing where it has taken place in abia state that it was swept under the carpet okay all right uh, this is the platform on flow 94.9 fm we're looking at impact of the external and internal accountability mechanism of security and law enforcement agencies during covid 19 the heat of the pandemic the covid 19 pandemic we'll go for a very quick break don't go anywhere and when we we'll return we'll continue this conversation at flow 94.9 fm we've got conducive and well secured environment for business high-tech video studio a state-of-the-art production studio you can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on youtube at flow fm tv flow 94.9 fm not just radio but a complete broadcasting house well thank you for being there Yes, we're still on the platform, a special edition of, for today, and it is the third day of the radio talk. Now, today we're looking at the um, impact of the external and internal accountability mechanism of security and law enforcement agencies during the COVID, the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic. I have with me um, the State Coordinator, National Human Rights Commission, Abia State, Barrister Uchin Wokocha, and also SP Jeffrey Obuna, the PPRO of the Nigerian Police Force, Abia State. They have been doing justice to this particular um, topic and we're still on it. Yes, we will take your calls in a very few minutes. But um, here's a question. Are there comprehensive um, professional standards that have been like um, code of conducts that have been provided to guide security agencies and law enforcement agencies in carrying out their duties? Yes, of course. Even in situations like the pandemic? Yes, of course. Okay. The Nigeria police, even before the uh, the coming in of um, COVID-19, we have a booklet, Code of Conduct for all police officers, which I believe went round to all the police officers. I have mine. And apart from this, we have police acts and regulation. Okay. What, what regulates your activities as a police officer so that when you are derailing you'll be able to caution yourself we also have civil service rule all these things the mechanisms that we use to control our activities okay. we have force orders we have daily orders and other other things you know that helps us to guide our our ways, our, our activities, mm. so that when you are going 
away, you'll be able to caution yourself and then you'll follow the right track. Okay. So um, now that we have experienced the novel coronavirus, it's new. It's something that um, we have not seen before, but then we're experiencing it. What And a lot of things actually happened during the heat of the pandemic. What mechanisms have been put in place to stop the acts um, from occurring in the future? Well, you're talking of uh, for the COVID-19 reoccurring. No, not the COVID-19 reoccurring now. The okay, some the, the of the um, anomalies the, the that anomalies. happened. All right. Yes. All right. On the part of security agencies. Yes. That is why I said earlier that we have training and retraining. Okay. Training and retraining program. Trying to train our people on how well to use their firearms and other equipment they have. Also, the Inspector General, there is a, this first order 237 that is being revised okay. or reviewed. Okay. So that every police officer should know when you are to pull your weapon and touch the trigger or how well you can, even if your firearm is cocked, you place it on safety and to uh, you know there are other rules of engagement okay. there are other rules of engagement and for this COVID-19 the people on the road we try to let them know that if you see somebody at least you have to be polite be polite be human when you see somebody not having a face mask because all this COVID-19 protocol is to ensure that we have a control to prevent further spread of it. So every police officer, you yourself that is exposed, you have to equip yourself just as I'm having mine mm. so that even if I have it, I won't be able to spread it to another person. And if somebody has it, I will not be able to contact it. So we let our officers to know that these are the things they should do and that they should not if you see somebody that is not wearing face mask not uh, wearing a face shield but uh, motor is carrying more than the necessary the, the approved number of passengers if you get them arrested you take them to court mm. just as it has been provided that right. there is a session now that is being used to prosecute people okay. and some of them are getting fined and apart from that we have to ensure that people coming into our police stations you have where you wash your hand or you sanitize and we don't even allow people to enter the, poli the, the police stations or offices without their face mask and other things so we we have all those things put in place so that in the event of you coming without having any you wash your hand, you get sanitized. Of course, we will not allow you in. In situation of um, crowding the cells. Yes, we are also working towards, we are doing it, we are doing it. We don't, we are no longer overcrowding ourselves. Okay. In fact, as soon as the, the COVID-19 set in, the Inspector General of Police directed and ordered that on no account should we detain people unnecessarily what i mean unnecessarily is that when you see somebody that has committed a case of assault you know it is a valuable offense once you see that there is somebody reliable that will take that person on bail release him on bail don't take him into custody okay. but those people who are involved in heinous crimes such as armed robbery kidnapping murder you have to take them to custody and separate them you keep them in every station we have more than two cells so you try to space them you know keep them and from time to time depending on when they have been taken to court so we can rightly say overcrowding in cells is 18 of the past it's 18 of the past okay it's 18 of the past we recently we recently had a you know a little of it that resulted in the cell break okay so unfortunately some of the people involved in that heinous crime that were taken to court because the correctional centers were not accepting them 
they they were remanded at the police stations mm -hmm. so that made our stations a bit overcrowded okay. a bit overcrowded but as soon as we got wind of it that you know because of this uh, social distance we now decided to space them take them to various stations all right various stations okay. not keeping them you know uh, at a particular place uh -huh. now you can see uh, police station from you know people from police station cps over here they can take a suspect to equal no okay they can take to world bank or uh -huh, just like that All to right. make sure that the cells are not congested okay so what suggestions does the national human rights commission have as regards um police um, brutality extortion and some of the things that we've talked about this morning you see uh it's obvious that these things are going on. We cannot deny it. It's also obvious that we have rules. But unfortunately, not everybody obey rules. Yeah. Just like uh, in every place. But we view, you know, self-examination is always suspicious. We are and uh, people in people uh, officers commit uh, offenses and they are, you know examined by officers of the same agency and uh, they may not come back come out with the the result that we are acceptable to everybody mm. uh, you cannot be a judge in your own case we are looking uh, national human rights commission we are advocating on a day the police will allow another institution to listen to complaints against the police okay. against the every not just the police all the law enforcement agencies, agencies because they commit they sit on it themselves they decide on punishment themselves and at times when they punish you hear that they've recalled people they've already punished dismissed because it's within their their purview they mm -hmm. recall them and they pay them areas of uh, you know salaries they have missed while they were on suspension and things like that we are looking forward to a day an institution will be will be there so okay. that if you have any encounter with them, you report to that institution who are outside them and outside you, they can now investigate. Then we will start seeing uh, things like, uh, but our law, our laws do not allow such. There was no provision for such in our laws. So mm -hmm. I cannot say it's their, their, it's their fault. I think it's, uh, it's got to do with our law reviews and things like okay. that when we go to that. Coming to conjunction of cells, much as National Human Rights Commission knows that uh, there are irregular arrests, there are detentions, there are, you know, that even parents take their children to the police station and ask the police to lock them up. They are very healthy. This guy doesn't uh, listen to me. Just few nights ago, a woman called me. This is in Abia State, that the husband has locked the son up in the cell around ten o'clock in the night. That we should come and assist her to to bail the boy out. That she wanted to sign the bail warrant. They said that they sh he sh she should not sign. That somebody else should come and sign. But that is just to tell you when we are talking about unlawful arrest, arrest and detention. It's not as if we are speaking on the air, but this is just a, a common, a, a simple explanation okay. of what I'm talking about. Now, we understand these things. And these things make the, the cells congested. Even where these practices are lacking, that is actually genuine people who need to be detained, mm -hmm. that are being detained. The cell is not special enough. We don't have enough cells. That's when I, when I'm, what, what I mean when I'm saying that National Human Rights Commission, when we say that people have to be accountable, you also have to make it possible for them to be accountable. Give them the equipment, give them the, the facilities, give them the space. We know that uh, this is a COVID pandemic. Yes. There has been an increase in crimes. Even crimes we do not know exist before like domestic violence, incest, defilement of uh, small children. We know that these things go on. There's no society that doesn't go on. But we didn't know. National Human Rights Commission, we never knew. It's almost getting out of hand until this COVID-19, when everybody was forced to stay at home. 
it is then that neighbors will look at their neighbors and know they've enslaved their house help it is then that some people look at children living in the next compound and found out that nails are hitting their head so we have increase in a in a in a criminal suspects and these are very dangerous criminals that should be kept in the cells mm. but do we have increase in police cells no we don't so the fact of overcrowding of the cells is a fact it's a serious one and there's nothing the police can do about it and unfortunately there's nothing the government the federal government is doing about it okay. so there's no need uh, you know beating about the bush about it all right it's a problem, it's a problem. and we have to acknowledge that it's a problem okay it, let's take your calls right now um call us up on 0808 or 0811 good morning good morning Choma. good morning to you what's your name who is i'm calling from good all morning right. epro good morning sir. Uh, and our sister that is in the house. Good morning. Thank God that you guys came on air to analyze this issue. Like I always said, uh, that security is supposed to be a collective responsibility. Mm. Uh, Mr. Geoffrey, I thank you that so you have been there for us. But the unfortunate thing happens that uh, your people, most of them, are not even willing to listen to these kind of programs. You see them, if 70% of police officers in Abia said, Omaya in particular, behave this way you are behaving, I believe that Omaya would have been a, a, a better place for all of us when it comes to police, people policing us. Mm. But unfortunately, you see, most of them take laws into their hands. Like at that, um, bend the road by... Wrap Omaya. up your thoughts, please. You see your people, uh, there was a particular lady that normally put on Mufti. Arrested and as in accusing of uh, KK people, not even motorists, not necessarily. But you can't address her, uh, her name because she always use more to cover her name. Most of things are happening. If, if I'm complaining, I'm begging that you people should have a, a team or a task force that be monitoring this guy, this guy themselves and look into the activities of the police people. You know, my and, and about in any way this state so that every state will become a better place for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. What's your name? Good Eric. All right. Go on. Um, I want to just bring in a few issues. Okay. I just mention them. Then you can deliberate on them. When they say there is, you shouldn't pay to be billed. Mm. And we know that people pay, and before they are granted bill. How do we treat that? Okay. Then, in terms of alcohol, drugs, and smoking, I see and I'm aware that most police officers, while on duty. They take alcohol, they take drugs, and they smoke. Mm -hmm. Who is responsible and how, what can be done? Okay. They talk about their dress code. What kind of uniform is allowed? Because I can, I can, I can mention like six different kinds of uniforms among police officers. Mm -hmm. Some, and they you look at their footwear, shoes, sandals, slippers, and uh, hat boots, and whatever. So it is not standardized. What do we do? Okay. Yeah. When you find a police officer offending, why do you go to police to report instead of going to lawyers or a radio station or somewhere else? Why would must you report police to police? Okay. They don't want to do that. Then when they say you should not take videos or phones or whatever into police officers, that is one of the things that encourages them to cause that should be your own evidence. All right. Them. Thank say, you. Have your phone and do this and then lastly, um, there are ways we should do to collaborate. Let the, let the police integrate themselves to the Zama society and also to integrate with them so that we can be having interpersonal inter 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 Okay. That Thank you. Now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We need to answer these questions that um, is before us. But um, let's take this call. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Hello? Yes. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, ma. What's your name? Yeah. Hello? Hello, good morning. What's your name? I'm Matt Smith. All right, quickly. Your contribution. Okay. I want to... Uh, good morning, um, CPRO. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Please, I want to ask my able CPRO that this, um, this COVID-19 uh, protocol enforcement, is this only on Keke riders or the general public? <laughs> Because like the, uh, as one of the caller called, I'm not calling a second rider. If you go uh, to GPS gate now, it's only passengers in Keke that 
the 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 sense to arrest and they will put they will arrest the ticket driver, not mm. even the person. Okay. Maybe the ticket driver that commits the crime or the person that is not wearing the face mask. All right, thank so you. Place, they are enforcing that law okay. only on Keke, even motoring. Thank they you. Don't enforce only on Keke. Please. That is injustice and justice. Thank you. All right, the PPRO will answer all the questions. All right, thank you so much. Let me start with the KK issue. You see that most KK riders, I have seen a lot of them. You see the rider will carry one or two passengers together with him in the front, having three at the back, making up six. Whereas government said, they should carry only two at the back. The KK, the KK operators are the ones that are, I would say, they are the, the, the greatest deviants. Mm -hmm. Let me use that word. Then other vehicle, uh, motor, other vehicle users, if you look well, it's only when you see that those vehicles or they, they, they are carrying more than the required numbers that you can get them arrested. And we all we have told the KK operators that you should leave whoever that is not wearing face mask and look for those wearing face mask. So if you deliberately carry somebody you know that is not having face mask, of course there's something we call vicarious liability. Whatever that person is going to suffer, you're likely to suffer. Sir. All right. Then about the people of uh, place, once you see our people behaving abnormally. We have numbers you can call. Please take my number and you call me because for want of time, I can't go further. My number is 080-3914-8294. Okay. Barisa Uche, before we go, your last words on the program. Yes, uh, you know, I just have to say something about the Keke riders. Yes, they are very, very undisciplined. I must support the PPRO on that. But I don't think that we have anything in our law like a criminal, you know, liability to somebody who is not the person that is offending. I've watched one day a keke driver was carrying a passenger. When he picked the passenger, the passenger has a face mask. But you know, we are not used to this uh, face, face mask. Thing. Enter the keke, remove the face mask. Okay. Getting to where they are checking them. He now, she now started to fumble in her bag to bring out the face mark. They stopped him and they punished the keke driver. It is not right. They should pick the person who is not wearing a face mask. Okay. Because I don't, everybody now should know something about this face mark, okay. mask and obey it. I don't think it is right. I don't think it is right. But the person who committed an offense should be responsible for that offense. Okay. And of course, please, keke drivers, stop comparing yourselves with motorists. So motorists have air conditioners in their cars. They are within themselves. They come to themselves. I want people to start taking this COVID-19 thing, protocols, very, very serious. Stop joking with it. The COVID-19 is still with us. Please. All right. Protect yourself and protect others. Thank you so much for joining us on the platform this morning. My name is Chioma Nkwanta. Enjoy the rest of your day.